So there's lots of different options um, that you have to uh, lower the amount of hallucinations that you would come across. But one of the easiest ways is to add knowledge to your bot. So we can go ahead and add knowledge through the interface here and add knowledge and create a new knowledge base. So, so let's say we're making this bot that serves as an ordering assistant for a restaurant or bakery, right? So the, our knowledge is going to be the menu. So we can call this menu and we can give it a description uh, menu for the bakery and we can click confirm then it's really easy to actually add units over to the actual knowledge base so let's go over here and click add unit and we're going to add something that's local to us but we also want to be able to upload something that's local um, in table format like an excel file or a csv file as well so let's just go over here and click next yeah, could you show us what the Excel file look like? Yeah, sure. So this is what the Excel sheet looks like. It has item names, pricing, and image. And these are just URLs to online images. And if you scroll up to the right, there is also whether it's a customer favorite. So it's a simple database. So let's head over back to our files here and we can upload it really easily. And we can go over here and click next. And we'll see that we get an entire page here that lets us manage what's inside of our CSV file as well. Sometimes it will tell you if something can't um, have a certain character, so we'll get rid of that. And we also can check our data types as well. So item name we can keep as a string, pricing we can keep as a string as well, image we can keep as a string since that's a URL, right? And then also customer favorite is another string. So just make sure you check your data types so you can really specify what exactly you are adding to uh, the knowledge as well. You would need to choose an index before you proceed. So that's usually your first column. Like which column do you see as the identifier for each item? So in this case, we're going to choose the item name and we can add a description for each field so the large language model can better understand what each field does. Cool. So now we have our index that's chosen for the item name and some descriptions as well. So we can go over here and click next. So then again, we get another readout of what our Excel file looks like. So we have our index here for item name, we have the pricing and all the other fields that are there as well. So it also tells us the amount of total records that we have here on display. So you can go over here and click next and it will process it all. And we can click confirm once we're done. We have all of this here and we can continue to add more content or even configure this entire Excel sheet again. We can rename it, update more content inside of it and modify the table structure as well. So there's lots of options when you're uploading different forms of data to your knowledge. So our knowledge is created now and we can go back to our bot workspace and we can add it. So you just go here, click add knowledge and you click add to whatever knowledge base you want to add to your bot. And if I ask a question like how many, many items do you have on the menu? It will start to use our knowledge base and it says we have seven different items in the menu, which is correct. Sometimes we can have conversations with our bot, even though it has this knowledge, but we can't rely on it to give us the most accurate answer every time we speak to it, right? There could be some instances where this bot decides to go off the rails and also talk about um, other topics they, that may not be found within the knowledge that we fed it. So there's ways to actually prevent that from happening. The first way is by going over to our model configuration and you see that we get to choose whatever model that we'd like. So right now with codes, you can choose these three different models from OpenAI, but you want to also take a look at the temperature. Now the temperature controls the randomness and it lowers and raises the results of random completions, right? So instead of taking this shot at being able just to answer the question because your bot receives some sort of context to it, we can actually lower the temperature here so that it has a more precise and accurate answer and it will shoot to answer your questions from the knowledge bases that you fed it more often than giving you a random response. So we can actually lower this to about like, let's say 0.3 for right now, because it's right in between precise and random. 
Yeah, so I think of temperature as the setting for how creative you want the LLM to be. Yeah. Like if you are writing fantasy stories or a very creative chatbot, then you can turn it up. If you want really precise and reliable answers, like a customer service chatbot, you might want to turn it down to make it more precise. So for this instance, right, like we are creating this chatbot to discuss our menu and things that are happening at our bakery. A lot of times you can see hallucinations are causing some types of troubles in some companies. I forgot which airline it was, but there was one the other day that had some hallucinations happening and it actually made the airline lose money because yep. it uh, adhered to some customer, some customer policy that they had. And you don't want that to happen to your business. So this is a way that you can control those type of situations and make sure that they don't happen as often. But Let's ask really another important. question to the bot. So can you recommend some popular items? So you're see, you see, even though we uploaded the Excel sheet as a knowledge, it's actually not drawing from the knowledge to answer. It's still using its own training data. Yeah. So let's say if we want the bot to only use the knowledge to answer our question. Is there a way to do that? Yeah. So you can go and use automatic call and there's lots of different options here for your knowledge for settings. So right now we'll just keep it on semantic search because basically your knowledge is using a vector store or a vector database to then retrieve relevant queries or relevant recommendations based on the scenarios or the context that you're having in the conversation with your bot. So because we are looking for recommended items um, and information about what we actually have stored and finding similarities, we want to use semantic search. So we'll keep that here as the choice that's already there as well. But let's bring our attention to minimum matching degree. Now, Minimum matching degree selects uh, the different paragraphs um, according to the setting match and degree um, of the reference model, right? So basically, if we lower this degree, we're going to make sure that the bot is going to actually uh, call to the knowledge more often when we are talking about different topics within the context of the semantic search. So if we lower this a bit as well, we should get a more accurate answer. Will this be okay right here? Yeah. 17 yeah. probably. Okay. Let's try the same question again and see if it's able to answer from the knowledge. So let's regenerate and see what's happening. Okay. Let's... Now it's searching from the knowledge. Yeah. Awesome. The other thing is notice how it's able to return the image from the knowledge. Um, so if you ask another question, say, can you show me a picture of the croissant? is actually able to retrieve the specific image that we put in the Excel file. And if we go to the prompt, that's because we have a line that says output image in this format. And then we include the image URL in the Excel sheet. So this is kind of a trick if you want your bot to give out image answers. Yeah, it's a good trick because you can use this across all the different skills as well mm -hmm. to make sure that your bot is following specific instructions as well. So make sure that you add this type of abstraction to your different bot skills, especially if you optimize this prompt or something similar to it as well. So to recap, if you want your bot to be more reliable and to reduce hallucination, I think there are three tips. Uh, one is use knowledge. If you want it to be even more precise, try to use an Excel sheet rather than a document or URL because mm -hmm. the Excel format is more structured, so it's going to be more accurate. Second tip is change the model's temperature to lower so the answers are more precise. And the third tip is go into the knowledge settings and go to the minimum matching degree and lower it. So this will increase the chance that the model draws from its knowledge to answer questions. So yeah, AI, AI chatbots aren't perfect, but this is a way that you can really improve and make sure that your users are having the experience that they expect and that you expect your bot to operate on.